<laughs> well, this is uh, this is Nathan Betts. Uh, why don't you just tell us, uh, just real quick, uh, a little bit personally? Tell us. I know you're you're married. You have kids. Uh, just tell us a little bit about your family. Yeah, so I'm uh, married. Uh, my wife's name is Brittany. We have four small children. Uh, uh, Sam is uh, seven years old. We have so Sam is seven. Saskia is five. Curtis is three, and then our youngest, Sabrina, at uh, ten months. So it's busy. Uh, it's a uh, it's a fun, lighthearted home. Uh, but uh, you know, the kids certainly keep us busy. We are grateful. Everyone's well. We moved out here to the Seattle area in 2015 from Toronto, Canada. So I'm born and raised in Canada. That means if you uh, prick my skin, still I bleed maple syrup. Uh, but uh, we love it here in the Pacific Northwest, and it's a real pleasure to take just have a small part in this weekend with you. I'm sure people would want to know a little bit about why apologetics as a field of focus for you and your ministry. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, it was interesting. You know, for, you know, in my teenage years, after I encountered Christ, that's when I sensed the call to be an evangelist. And uh, I didn't really know what that meant in terms of how to prepare. And uh, I remember meeting um, with different people and the mentors I had in my life at the time, they encouraged me to study the Bible, have, you know, a strong foundation of uh, Bible and theology under my belt. If I'm going to be an evangelist, I have to have that as a foundation. So I did that. The irony is when I graduated from uh, Tyndale, that's a uh, uh, Christian university in uh, Toronto, Canada, I felt useless as an evangelist. I thought, I'm just hopeless. I'm not, you know, I wouldn't want to listen to myself. You know, that's what I thought at the time. I thought, I'm just simply not cut out for this. So I worked different jobs, and here was the interesting point. I worked for the Toronto Blue Jays baseball club, and I worked there for four years on the ground crew, um, and really thinking I have to come up with a plan, but in the process of coming up with a plan, because at that point, I didn't think I could do it. I didn't think I was adequate to be an evangelist. I, I was thinking, you know, what should I do? At the very least, I need to do it. I need to work. So I was working for the Blue Jays, and interestingly, that is where I recovered confidence in who Christ has called me to be, particularly because day in and day out, I was engaging with people who didn't know Christ. Also, they weren't interested. So to even say they were hostile towards the faith, that's almost like giving them a bit more than they actually were. They simply were not interested. Um, and uh, for me, they asked questions though. And interestingly, they would not be labeled faith questions on their terms, but they were. They were, they were questions of faith that they were synthesizing yeah. day in and day out. And so over that period of time, that's where I gathered confidence. And what I did study formally that came in uh, profoundly uh, um, helpful. It was very helpful in those conversations. But that's actually where I got confidence. So I would say, hmm. in short, it certainly was a process. It was not A, B to C. It was very, almost feels zigzag. You know, it wasn't like I just did a BA and then a master's and all of a sudden, bada bing, sort of like just the sausage coming out of the machine. Apologist. Um, that actually was not me. It was very much, you know, study, in, in, in encounter, endure, and in, in discouragement, getting things wrong, making mistakes, and then all of a sudden um, having experiencing the Lord's help in all of it. And what I found really for me in uh, in what I did is my passion was to see people come to Christ. And RZIM, you know, Ravi Zacharias International Ministries. Uh, I, I got to know uh, a few people, and then uh, eventually uh, the director of the Canada office offered me a job as a full-time itinerant speaker in 2011. I think the reason why I love doing what I'm doing and see it matching up to my call is that I, I do see myself as an evangelist. But RZAM, I feel, matches up well in that it's an evangelistic organization, uh, and as Ravi Zacharias would put it, undergirded by apologetics. So apologetics um, is the seasoning, so to speak. But the end, the main goal is how do we sh shine a spotlight on the beauty and attractiveness of Jesus Christ? Apologetics, the why questions. Yes, that is hugely important. So I have the opportunity and I love doing that. But I will say full disclosure, if we don't get at some point in the conversation to the profundity of who Jesus Christ is, I almost feel the conversation is incomplete. But the evidential Absolutely. claim... Are, are robust in pointing to Jesus Christ. 
So well said. I, the, the information is where we first go to in our minds when we think about apologetics, but you want to bring a personal engagement with Christ as the ultimate goal. And that's certainly what we want to see. And, and uh, I think that's missing in a lot of our conversations and approaches to how we engage with people. We believe it's a battle of facts first, and that's only a, that's an, one element of it. I love the encounter dimension of your story. Yeah, so Nathan, you know that we we talked about these topics a long time ago, long before the the coronavirus situation. Um, it just seems like that question's been asked so much more uh, recently. Uh, we've been doing some uh, online advertising, and, and it, we've had that question in there: uh, Why does God That's allow? Right. Uh, why could a good God allow suffering? Or or that you know that question. And that's been clicked on a lot. There's a strong interest in that question. So. I guess our question to you is just tell us uh, why this is so important. Why is that an important question that people need an answer for? Now, let me say a couple of things. Uh, I'll be really quick here. One is, I think, and I share this just in uh, the early point of my talk. I think it's helpful to understand just from the very beginning that when we look at this question of suffering, it's a very jagged edge question. Um, it's not a Christian question. I think that sometimes for me, for say those of you who might be listening this weekend, we we have this um, unfortunate assumption that it's a Christian question, meaning uh, what does Christianity have to say? Because Christianity is on the hot seat for this one. And that's right. uh, actually a mistake because actually every system of belief has to pay up at some point. In other words, that's right. the question really is, Everyone must answer. No one escapes. So the question is, who has the answer, the framework within which makes best sense of this problem? It's a problem for everybody. So what I like to say is it's actually a human being question. Suffering is there with or without God. But the, the equation in which we have God means we have hope. The equation That's in right. which we have suffering and no God means all of a sudden we still have suffering. And it's a huge problem. But now we've removed hope from that equation. The question is, will we respond to him? Will we accept his invitation in, in even in this moment of crisis? Man, that gets me excited for the talk I know. already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It's going to be exciting to hear how you build all of that frame out. But those are two insights that as I've studied the question in my own ministry, our own ministry, I've, I've really not seen developed well at all. So boy, it's going to be a great, great presentation. People might think apologetics, gee, I can't master all that data. Uh, evangelist, evangelistic challenges, I'm not courageous enough to come up with all these answers. But what you're talking about is having a deep enough walk with Jesus that out of that walk, you can encounter people and represent your faith. Uh, that's achievable for anybody. Uh, as a speaker, I've found people saying that, hey, look, we, you know, Christianity is getting all these attacks and we need uh, you know, a new defense. We need a new response. And the issue is not that we need a new response. What we really need is fresh confidence. I think if many of us were to be honest, the issue is not content. Now, content is very important. We need to know what to say. But for many of us, we're not sure actually if the gospel is good news anymore. And so if actually we don't think good news is good news. Well, we're not going to be telling anybody about good news if we're not sold on it ourselves. So we've lost, we've lost confidence and we need to regain that. And that confidence is directly linked to engaging with Christ. Confidence does not begin uh, with strategies. It begins with knowing Christ afresh. And he fills us with his presence and we go out. The content is important, but I would suggest it's secondary. You know, one thing I mentioned uh, uh, in one of the talks is I looked to 1 Peter 3.15 and really just cite it. But 1 Peter 3.15 is interesting in and of itself because here you have Peter, you know, uh, bastion of the early church, writing to a persecuted church. Uh, but what is so encouraging to me there is he's challenging there, uh, challenging that church, a persecuted church. 1 Peter 3.15, and he says, but in your hearts, set apart Christ the Lord is holy. Always being prepared to give a reason for the hope that you have. Now, what's interesting for me, probably at the top of the list, is the audience to whom he's addressing. 
he's not addressing a group of specialists. He's not bringing people in from Athens and saying, look, guys, we have the, you are the intellectual elite. Now we need you to get to it and spread the word. No, he's actually talking to like everybody, no matter their vocation. He's saying, look, part of actually being in Christ means you tell people about it. And That's Peter's weird. assumption, yeah, Peter's assumption there is, look, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. But that is contingent upon whether we're living a life that uh, begs the question of others. Wow, that's amazing that you live that way. Tell me why. Um, mm. So it's for everybody. And that I think that really takes the edge off that, no, uh, sharing our faith with others is not for specialists or intellectually elite. It's simply for people who have committed their lives to Christ and are interested in going deeper in him. Christ calls us to that, and he doesn't leave us alone. He's with us every step of the way. That encourages me. I'm looking forward uh, to, to the weekend. I know everybody that's viewing this is going to be looking more forward to the weekend. And uh, Josh, as we wrap up, uh, just kind of remind everybody again about uh, the must-know details about how to, how to view Nathan's and presentations, the live Q&A that we'll be doing as well. So why don't you kind of wrap it up uh, by giving us all that we need to know. Yeah, so Saturday, May 16th, uh, 6 o'clock in the evening, that's the time that you need to know, uh, and we'll be going live. And I'll be in two locations. Uh, if you watch our services online, it's the same places. So you can go to our, our YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash Valley Forth Church, or to our Facebook page, uh, like Valley Forth Church on Facebook. And we'll be live simultaneously in both of those locations. You'll, you'll see us introduce Nathan. You'll, you'll hear us teaching. Uh, we'll have the live Q&A. There will be a phone number for you to text in your questions. We're going to ask Nathan questions just like this, and he's going to answer. Yeah. Um, and so that's uh, where you're going to want to be on that, that YouTube channel um, to, to see that on Saturday. So uh, thanks, for everybody, for connecting with us today in a special edition of, of Community Connection. Thank you, Nathan Betts, for joining us uh, and uh, for a great weekend that you have planned with us. We're, we're looking forward to the blessing of the Lord and the encouragement of people about a true encounter with Jesus that can be truly defended. So thank you, guys. We're going to see you all this weekend for the conference. Thanks for connecting with us today. God bless.